Imagine a firefighter with wireless heat sensors on their gloves that read the temperature of everything they touch, a wireless oxygen sensor on their tank, and a wireless vital signs patch on their chest, reading their body temperature and their heart rate, transmitting all that data while communicating in real time back to the chief. This is the internet of things in a burning building, and this is not possible with Bluetooth. The modern warfighter is now equipped with upwards of 15 body-worn technologies all connected by wires. And modernization of the soldier requires wireless connectivity. Now imagine a fully integrated communications and IT system that will connect a soldier's body-worn technologies all the way back to command and control to provide real-time battlefield intelligence. This is the Internet of Things on the battlefield, and this is not possible with Bluetooth. So now imagine a pacemaker that can call 911 through your smartphone if your heart stopped beating. This is the Internet of Things in medicine, and this is not possible with Bluetooth. A swimming coach has never been able to talk directly to their athlete when they were swimming. Imagine listening to your coach, your music, and even a report on your vital signs through a tiny, low-powered transducer that vibrates against your tooth. This is the Internet of Things in sports, and this is not possible with Bluetooth. You and I are here because we're interested in connecting devices. Lots of them. Trillions of them, in fact, because the Internet of Things has begun. From a connectivity standpoint, the Internet of Things is really the World Wide Web reaching far beyond our computers to include more and more of the devices and things around us, and by definition, much of that connectivity has to be wireless. To be useful, those trillions of connected devices and things will have to be able to organize themselves intelligently into groups or networks. And we're here to talk specifically about a grouping called wireless personal area networks. That's the network of wireless devices that connect within about six feet of you, and it is absolutely your most important personal link to the Internet of Things. In general, it helps to think of wireless personal area networks in terms of a hub, your smartphone for instance, and the peripherals your wearables and other devices that enter your space or personal area network. Crazy thing is, as crucial as they are, there are currently no real wireless personal area networking platforms, just Bluetooth, which is great when there are only a couple of devices to connect, but terrible for connecting lots of them. So up until now, we have been unable to connect to the IoT in any meaningful ways. Physics tells us there are only three ways to communicate wirelessly, sound, voice for instance, light, laser or line of sight, and electromagnetic waves. When we think of electromagnetic waves, we're typically thinking of radio frequency or RF. And in the case of wireless personal area networks, that's Bluetooth. RF signals are all essentially the same. The signal is loaded with energy and shot out of the antenna to travel as far as it possibly can until the signal runs out of energy. That's why RF is called a far-field transmission. Far-field transmission is great when you want to communicate over long distances, but there are serious problems when lots of devices use RF or Bluetooth to communicate over short distances. For example, let's talk security. You can't stop RF signals from propagating into space, and out there with it goes the handshake and encryption protocols. That's why Bluetooth devices have been hacked over a mile away. Now how about reliability? When too many devices use the same radio frequency too close to each other, they interfere with each other. Most people don't even know that Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, cordless phones, baby monitors, and even microwave ovens all use the same frequency, and that they already shut each other down all the time. And this is before we've even begun to try and connect those trillions of things. It's fair to say the wireless highway that's been allotted to Bluetooth by the FCC is now bumper to bumper. And the only way to fix the problem is to get the FCC to allot some other frequencies. Very difficult. Even if they do, with a trillion devices, you eventually run out of space, period. There's only so much room to carry information on the airwaves. How about power consumption? When you pack a signal with enough energy to travel way past the device you need to speak with, you're wasting power. That's why your little Bluetooth earpiece only lasts a few hours. And that's why Bluetooth had to come up with Bluetooth Low Energy. They just turned down the power. But lower power also means lower data rates, less room for encryption and security, and lower reliability. 
Okay, so what's the big deal? Bluetooth seems to be everywhere and doing just fine. Well, it's not. Federal field agents cannot use Bluetooth, and the iPhones that are now being issued by the Departments of Homeland Security and Justice, that's the FBI, have the Bluetooth turned off. Congress passed an act in 2012 that practically requires all public safety agencies to switch from two-way radios to smartphones over the next few years with the first $7 billion RFP issued last month. Bluetooth is in trouble in this market because law enforcement will never trust it. The NSA has issued warnings about Bluetooth vulnerabilities that severely restrict its use, and Bluetooth is dead on arrival in the armed forces. It will never be used on the battlefield because using Bluetooth is like painting a target on yourself. Implantable defibrillators, insulin pumps, and infusion pumps with Bluetooth have all been hacked, and Bluetooth can't be used to communicate with deeply implanted medical devices. So who's ever going to trust Bluetooth to control their medical devices? Bluetooth failures are currently a serious setback to the implementation of connected health. Finally, the Formula One race car is the cutting edge IoT platform with over 300 sensors communicating data in real time for off-track analytics that allow the driver to make split second decisions at full speed. But there are already too many Bluetooth sensors on the track and Bluetooth link losses of three to five seconds occur in mission critical systems at over 200 miles an hour. It's absurd to even think of using Bluetooth here if there's another alternative. In fact, every technology has its time and the age of Bluetooth by itself is coming to an end. So what is the alternative? Near field magnetic induction or NFMI is the other part of the electromagnetic wave we don't think about. Just like it sounds, NFMI is designed to connect devices that are near to each other, trillions of them. NFMI is easy to understand. Imagine two magnets. The attractive force is strong when they're close to each other and undetectable when they're apart. NFMI uses those attractive forces to communicate. Near field magnetic induction or NFMI is as old as Tesla and based on two simple principles. A time-varying current in a conductive wire will generate a time-varying magnetic field. A time-varying magnetic field will induce a current into a conductive wire within the magnetic field. By modulating that magnetic field to carry information, data and voice can be transferred wirelessly between two points. NFC is based on the same principles, but NFMI is a remarkable evolution of NFC that extends the reading distance from one to four inches from NFC to up to nine feet for NFMI using the exact same frequency. At around 13 megahertz, NFMI provides a data rate of over 400 kilobits per second per frequency channel, up to 10 separate frequency channels, and 10 subchannels per frequency channel using time division. That's 100 separate wireless links per smartphone inside a single wireless personal area network. Bluetooth can only do a few very poorly. And because magnetic fields decay a thousand times faster than Bluetooth, NFMI actually creates a wireless bubble around you. Inside that bubble, multiple devices reliably connect and outside they simply cannot be seen. I repeat, they cannot be seen. That wireless bubble is invisible to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and NFMI does not cause interference in other devices or wireless networks. This is the ultimate new security layer, and in fact, the NSA has already made exceptions for NFMI because it's so secure. And because magnetic fields decay a thousand times faster than Bluetooth, once you've moved a short distance away from the bubble, the same frequency can be used to create another bubble over and over and over again. It's not physically possible to overcrowd the airwaves with NFMI like you can with RF. In fact, going back to that problem with Bluetooth and the wireless highway being bumper to bumper, it's fair to say that NFMI offers an HOV lane for every single device. And NFMI uses only a fraction of the power used by Bluetooth to move the same amount of information. The power level is so low that NFMI communications are below the threshold set by the FCC, 
and the current NFMI personal earpiece already lasts 20 hours of talk time on a single charge. You're lucky if you get three to four hours out of a Bluetooth earpiece. And because magnetic fields are not affected by water, NFMI can communicate underwater and with deeply implanted medical devices. And the FDA has already approved of NFMI. And for you serious techies out there, iBeacon and Wi-Fi Aware step aside. NFMI can be used to provide the precise location and orientation of devices inside the personal area network. In the rapidly approaching future of distributed computing, that is a required component for context-aware wireless networking. It means that your smartphone knows the exact location of devices inside its bubble. So imagine a patient with an implanted drug delivery pump. And imagine the only way the drug delivery schedule could be modified was if the doctor's smartphone was in the correct location inside the patient's bubble. Talk about the ultimate insecurity. This is the Internet of Things in Medicine, and it's called Connected Health. But why is it so important? There are simply not enough doctors to manage our increasingly complex healthcare delivery system. And population growth around the world has already outpaced the growth in the number of healthcare providers. In the United States alone, there is a projected shortage of over 100,000 doctors and 1 million nurses by the year 2020. To address this global challenge, our healthcare system is rapidly evolving to be able to remotely monitor our health and to treat us when it's needed, not just if and when we get to the doctor. This is not possible without secure and reliable connectivity to the growing number of wireless medical devices that patients use, wear, and implant. NFMI solves these problems, and an old form of NFMI has been used for decades in our hearing aids and our pacemakers. Most importantly, from an implementation and adoption standpoint, NFMI is really just the next generation of NFC and can even be used to read NFC at greater distances. So NFMI is already in our smartphones. Okay, so who uses NFMI now? Only the most demanding customers in the world, law enforcement officers. NFMI is used to provide wireless personal area networking solutions to over 2,500 separate federal, state, and local agencies, including the FBI and the U.S. Secret Service. NFMI has already received waivers from the NSA, and NFMI has already been successfully demonstrated on a U.S. Naval flight deck. NFMI was even used by the security detail protecting the Pope on his recent visit to the United States. The world's leading manufacturer of wireless accessories are now adopting NFMI for their public safety, commercial two-way, and military products. Finally, high-fidelity wireless headsets have never sounded good with Bluetooth, so why pay big money for lousy sound? Bluetooth breaks down the music into packets and reassembles those packets at the other end of the link. Any packet loss from interference means the loss of fidelity and decreased sound quality. The fidelity offered by NFMI is incomparable. So where do we go from here? Neither NFMI nor Bluetooth or any other wireless platform by itself can address all of the wireless connectivity challenges presented by the IoT. They will all have to work together in what's now called the cognitive radio. Imagine Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, NFMI all together on the same chip. And imagine NFMI providing their handshake and encryption protocols only for devices inside the bubble. Now that's Bluetooth secure. And that would allow Bluetooth to play a useful role in wireless personal area networking. Imagine a Wi-Fi network that recognizes too many Bluetooth devices in the conference hall have begun to slow down the connection speeds and instructs those devices to switch to NFMI to optimize performance. This is only possible if NFMI is part of the solution. The Internet of Things is upon us. Trillions of things are asking to connect, and it cannot happen without all of us working together. Reach out and learn more about how NFMI holds a key to that future.